Hi everyone, this is Genevieve Townsend. Welcome to People in Place Fabric. So I'm going to go over your kit, uh, what you would have received if you had requested materials. Um, so you would have gotten an assortment of fabrics and again because of COVID and the difficulty sourcing materials, um, I've actually contributed some of my own fabrics. I am a bit of a fabric junkie, so I've been collecting uh, various <laughs> material for quite some time. So anyways, we gave you a, a basic starter kit with fabric, but if you have any other materials at home, even lace, ribbon, old shirts that you like the patterns of, feel free to, can, to add that to your piece. Um, this project is meant to be as open as possible to bring your own creativity to it. So even though we've, we've given you some material, you can definitely add to that. And again, yeah, bring your own creativity. So some of you, I put a little bit of ribbon in, which I'll get into. That's part of the template design. So maybe I'll talk about that. So you would also have received a paper template of your eight by 10 piece. And in this instance, um, I guess you can probably kind of tell potentially, maybe not, that this is a part of a tree. This is the, the bark of a tree. Um, and if also if you're wondering the upside and downside of your image, all of the paper templates on the back have a number with your name and probably the material that you, have, the medium you've chosen to work in as well the fabric base that you have received has a number at the top as well. So that kind of gives you an idea of which is top and which is down. Because in some ways, um, some of the pieces you can't actually tell. They are map-like and, and so you could actually flip them around and you maybe wouldn't know which was the right way up. Um, which may not matter, but sometimes it does. Kind of gives us an idea of where we're going. So some of you may have got a piece of fabric with nothing on it. The template is blank and I left that up for you to, to, to do yourself, especially for those who have chose the complicated ones. As well, when I was first starting creating the kits, um, I had left them blank for those who chose um, complicated. And then I realized over time, it might actually be a little simpler if I, if I did trace out that basic outline for all of you. So if you didn't get that and you want to put it on and you're not really sure how to start, uh, what I did was just find, a, well, especially a sunny day helps, use a window and I taped my template to the window and then taped this over top, lining up the, uh, the edges so everything would be very accurate. And then just trace that out with a thin marker. So that's, that's an option. As well, if you... If you actually would like a different fabric for your base or you're, you're intending to maybe cover what would be considered green space. So on your template, the white of, your, of the template is actually the green. So if you're looking down at a map, it would be the trees, the fields, the landscape. Um, because the piece is so large, it's um, over five by six feet. Um, it would have been a lot of coloring in for me and I, I just kind of left that blank and then everyone's received a piece of fabric in the green tone. But again, you could you could bring different texture to that. You could use other fabrics, but that, that is intended as being like a green background, which, which runs through the whole uh, piece. Other things to note about the template um, that are kind of important are any lines that run right to the edge of your piece um, are going to be moving into another collaborator's piece so it's pretty important to stay as accurate as possible um, because that's going to flow that that's going to flow into another person's piece and you kind of want that to be uh, congruent as well if you're wondering what does this mean <laughs> so the the overall image has a large tree on the right side, and this is the bark of that tree, um, with red and orange leaves falling from the right side of the piece and across the whole piece. And then the left side has, has, has a few other trees that are dropping a 
yellow and light green leaves and they flow from the other side of the piece. Um, so these very simple leaf outlines um, can also be done with more detail. You don't have to stick to this color per se or even have it plain. You could use, you could go in an embroidery. If you had fabrics of your own that have a leaf pattern, you could potentially applique that. You really can do whatever you like. These can be much more complicated than they are. But the idea is that, yeah, red and orange leaves falling from one side of the, the piece and then yellow and light green falling from the other side. As well, if you've got these red lines, thicker and thinner red lines running through your image, these are the highways and roads um, of the map aspect of this overall piece. And those may be, it may be easier just to sew a line or embroider a line and then some folks, if they had this piece, I got my hands on some red ribbon and that actually works perfectly, pretty much perfectly to be used as the thicker highways. And so that's another option too, is you could use some, some ribbon. Um, if you've got a red dot in your template, those are actually towns or um, cities, hamlets. What we decided is that, is that we wouldn't put names on the actual piece itself, but we're gonna have a legend, a, a textile legend that will have more details about the people and places of our communities. And yeah, but for now, they're just indicators. So that little red dot's kind of important. That's a little, a little town or city of our area. And again, the other aspect is these are water. These are either rivers, lakes, and again, if they can connect to the edge of your piece, that's gonna move into another person's um, uh, piece. So it's, again, important to try to stay as accurate as possible. But again, you don't have to follow this pattern. You could use different types of blue material in here. Um, you could paint on your own fabric to, to create a bit more texture, whatever interests you. And same with the, the bark here, even though I've kind of shaded and given indications of lines that move down into another person's piece, these are not hard and fast lines. So you could really create the bark with as much texture and shape or not as you are interested in doing. Um, the, the main line that's important is this black one, that that stays in the right spot because that's gonna move into the other person's, but the, the texture and bark of this, you really can play with. I think that's what will be really fun to see ultimately when all the pieces come together is that everyone's approached things in a different way, has maybe a different color palette in, um, that they're interested in. I think that will be actually very, very interesting. So I, because I wanted to show you this blank piece, I really haven't started in on doing one yet. Um, I've cut some pieces out that I think I'm going to do an applique version, um, probably with a, a, a few more colors to make my bark. But again, some of you are very adept at, at doing uh, fabric art and have different approaches to how you do this. Some folks may use a type of fabric glue. You could do overstitching. You could, again, fold this really nicely and uh, and sew that down, do different forms of applique that would be really, really clean. Or you could just cut them, sew all these different colors together to make texture for bark and leave those edges raw to be a little bit, um, they could fray a little bit and that might actually be some interesting texture too. You could, you could add lace, you could add yarn, different types of stitching. There's really no rule I think you really can play with this. And the one thing I would say is it does, it would probably help me if some of some of your image, some of the, the fabric you use just kind of overlaps a little bit because um, that that little white line that kind of runs around your edge, your eight by your eight by ten, is where I'm gonna be sewing it to another person's work. So even though this, this is an overflap, it's gonna, 
that's pretty much what it's going to look like as it abuts the next person's. So a little bit of overlap would help me. Um, and again, if you want to bring more fabric in, if you want to paint a little bit of color onto your piece, there really are no rules. Um, there is an overall design, which hopefully is nice and cohesive and interesting. And then each individual piece is going to be really telling your story in your creative um, voice. So what I think I'm going to do, since I really haven't done almost any of this, because I did want to show you the blank surface first, is I will up, um, I will post a video of or, or a little picture of the final piece to give you an idea. But again, feel free to call me, feel free to email me. Um, I'm really happy to get you started, talk you through some ideas and any questions that you have as well. I'm definitely here for you and yeah, more than happy to help in any way. Also, it would be kind of nice if we have the ability to kind of share some of the work we're, um, we're doing. Uh, obviously, if we weren't in COVID times, we'd be able to um, do workshops together where we could actually make and create and chat. Um, we can't do that right now, but hopefully we still have the ability to share and inspire each other. So hopefully this is like kind of like a helpful little starting point. Um, again, if, if you need more information or you want more, um, yeah, anything, just please let me know. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate you wanting to be part of this um, collaborative piece. And yes, hopefully, hopefully we'll get be able to get together in the new year. And if not, I'm very excited to see what you all create and put it all together. Thank you so much. Take care.